Welcome to the big picture, where you get the background and broad strokes for a hundred year period of dramatic change on the Texas frontier. When you think of the frontier, think of a line between the known and the unknown, a place where people struggled with the land, the weather, and each other, doing whatever it took to provide for themselves and their families. This region of Texas was a place where various forces and peoples were thrown together under extreme conditions. That made for a hot time on the Texas frontier, and it also meant the outcome of this conflict was far from certain. Let me tell you something. It's a humbling experience just to think how long people have been living and, and dying on this land. 500 generations of Indians fighting wolves and grizzlies, hunkering down against killer tornadoes and freezing blue northerns, making a life for themselves and their families off the bounty of nature. Today, people tend to think these early Indians were all kind of similar. By the time Spanish explorers ventured across the plains, the Indians of North America spoke over a thousand different languages and dialects, and they were as different from each other as an Italian fisherman from a Viking warrior. It was a hard land for folks on foot, but it was filled with antelope, deer, wolves, and millions of buffalo, and that made it a land worth fighting for. Some of the first people to live in this area were the Humano Indians. But in the 1600s, they were pushed out by the Apaches. A hundred years later, Comanche invaders came out of the Rockies. Acquiring horses brought to Santa Fe by the Spanish, the Comanches rode onto the plains like a whirlwind. The horse made it possible to follow the buffalo's migrations and to kill them easier, too. And though they traded horses to other tribes, it was the Comanches who became the lords of the plains and dominated this region in war and peace for over a century. That sets the stage for the beginning of our story, the hundred years of frontier Texas. A time when the melting pot of people thrust together in this region grew hotter and hotter. One of the few written records of the time is the diary of Pedro Vial, an accomplished blacksmith who lived among the Indians of Texas and spoke Spanish, French, and several Indian languages. In 1785, the Spanish governor in San Antonio sent Vial on an expedition to negotiate a peace treaty with the Comanches. Nous sommes rentrés dans le premier camp des Comanches. With the help of God, we entered the first encampment of the Comanches. And so many Indians came out, it was not possible to kill them. Though my estimate was of 2,000 warriors. Though the Comanches have made war for many years against the people of New Spain, they agreed to make a peace in San Antonio. God allowing, this peace will last. But peace with the Indians of Texas did not last. And over the next 50 years, first Spain and then Mexico's tentative hold on this wild region slipped steadily away. Always moving west, the United States acquired 800,000 square miles of land from France and the Louisiana Purchase. Then Mexico lost control of this region when a revolution by U.S. settlers gave birth to the proud new nation of Texas. Ten years later, Texas gave up its independence to become the 28th state in the Union. And America's military used Texas as their base in the Mexican War. Mexico's defeat in that war led them to recognize the U.S. annexation of Texas. The U.S. Army's presence in Texas also brought Army explorer R.B. Marcy, who rode all the way from Fort Smith, Arkansas, to Santa Fe. Selecting sites for a line of military posts to serve as a barrier between settlers who kept pushing back the frontier and Indians who did a little pushing of their own. To the settlers, this land seemed empty and free for the taking by anyone with guts and gumption. The way the Indians saw it, the settlers were invading tribal hunting grounds. People on both sides wanted to guarantee a future for their families, and both were willing to fight and die to do it. After the Civil War, a new wave of settlers advanced like a rising tide. A 
second line of forts was built across this region and battles raged between soldiers and Indians. As the buffalo to the north were decimated, hunters came south in search of the last great herds, moving on to lands that had been promised to the Indians and wiping out the buffalo that the Indians depended on for life. It was a time of bloody conflict, a time when both whites and Indians were murdered and scalped. With the destruction of the buffalo, the remaining Indians had no choice but life on the reservations. With the prairie open for settlement and the range covered by wild longhorns, enterprising men like George Reynolds and Charles Goodnight drove large herds to buyers who paid $30 for a steer worth only three in Texas. Between the years 1866 and 1888, millions of cattle were driven up the trail from Texas. Then cattle ranching also changed as barbed wire and windmills brought an end to the open range and towns started springing up in all directions. The frontier was no more. Civilization had arrived.